What's up fellow autism? I played a game and I want to talk about it. In 2007, EA Skate took the world by storm and overthrew Tony Hawk as the skateboarding video game king, outselling that year's Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. But Skate was a PS3 and 360 exclusive, leaving last gen owners and particularly Wii owners in the dust. Proving Ground was released for the PS2 and Wii, but the less we talk about those ports, the better. A year later, Skate It dropped for the Wii, marking the franchise's only spin-off. Developed by EA Montreal and released in November of 2008, Skate It brought the concept of the original game, dumbed it down, and made everything uglier. But graphics don't really mean anything if the game plays fine, so how does Skate It hold up today? Here's my review. Skate It starts out with a hyped up intro, kind of like what the Tony Hawk games had, and that's nice. It's too bad the rest of the series didn't have something like this. I know the other games had opening cutscenes, but I'd only played once in your entire playthrough, and it didn't really match the whole, you know, get hyped, get hyped, get hyped, get hyped feel that the Tony Hawk games had, you know? Anyway, let's start a new career and see what's been cooking since Skate 1. So you see some dude skating in San Vanalona, minding his own business when an inconsiderate earthquake destroys the entire city. Assholes. The city of San Vanalona has been left devastated by a series of freak disasters. San Vanalona's emergency services have now evacuated over 99% of the city's population. A remarkable feat that has left a once bustling metropolis, a virtual ghost town. After the earthquake conveniently made some half pipes, Skate's resident camera guy, Retta, checks everything out and finds you, skating like nothing happened. Retta notices you and offers to team up and shoot some footy in this desolate ghost town. What's the matter, you don't talk much? That's all right, I talk a lot, man. I'll talk enough for both of us, so don't even sweat it. You're then thrown into the creative skater and what the fuck is that thing? Anyways, despite the fact that your character can look like a Minecraft skeleton, the creative skater is actually quite nice. There's not a lot to talk about here, but it gets the job done, I guess. You're then dropped into the elementary school from Skate 1 and Retta gives you a tutorial on how to control the game. There's three methods of controls in Skate It. There's the Wiimote, the Wiimote Nunchuck, and the Wiimote with the balance board. I ended up using the Wiimote and Nunchuck because I had a Nunchuck, but I didn't have a balance board. What made Skate feel so good compared to Tony Hawk was its revolutionary flick at control system. Instead of pressing left and X to do a kickflip, you actually flip the right stick down and then flick it up diagonally to do a kickflip or a heel flip. Now, how did EA translate those controls to the Wii? Well poorly. Okay, it's not actually all that bad, but essentially what you do is you swing the Wii remote around, you do tricks. That's fine on paper, right? But the execution of it leaves a lot to be desired. And unfortunately, these controls made the tutorial just unnecessarily difficult. They wanted me to do a shove it, so I did the exact motion that it told me to, but I kept doing kick flips and varial kick flips and ollies and hard flips, but not shove it. It took me a while and I eventually got it, but this exposes the worst part about Skate It. The bootleg flick it, or should I say swing it controls are so inconsistent. If you do the same motion five times, you probably won't be able to do the trick you want. Try doing a tray flip and try doing that consistently. You can't. In my playthrough, most of the tray flips I did were accidental as I was trying to do another trick. And as I said before, you can use the balance board to control it and doing flip tricks consistently seems to be a lot easier than just swinging the Wiimote, but you have to deal with leaning side to side and turn. And after going through Tony Hawk Ride, I don't want to subject myself to that. With grabs, however, it was actually quite fine. You use the B button to grab your board and then tilt the Wiimote to tweak it. No complaints here, but I did more backside grabs than I did frontside grabs, but that's a small nitpick. Oh yeah, you can also do a little bunny hop too while grabbing on flat, and that's pretty cool. Not sure why they didn't add this to the other games. Even though the controls needed a lot of work, and I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, let me use a goddamn GameCube or Classic controller. The physics feel like skate. It's down to earth and has a realistic feel. Spinning is a bit fast and it has kind of a snap to it, but otherwise this is probably the most realistic skateboarding game on the Wii, hands down. Once you're done with the tutorial, you can start going through the story. The story, which takes place in between Skate 1 and Skate 2, Two goes like this. Sam Van gets trashed from an earthquake, you and Retta start filming stuff, pros notice, and then you go around the world. Then you get sponsors, and then you eventually become Thrasher Skater of the Year. It's basic, but that's pretty much every pro skater's life story, isn't it? Minus the earthquake and Skater of the Year part. To progress through the story, you do some challenges. It mostly consists of photo and film challenges. Get a certain amount of points, do a certain amount of flip tricks and grabs, do a good enough spin, poof, you're famous now. Sometimes in photo challenges, you'll be able to pick a photo of your line, but most of the time the photos aren't that great. 
There's also my spot goals where you have to pull your tricks off in a specific area. And in that area, you can actually move the park pieces that's there. It does somewhat force you to get creative, but at the same time, it really doesn't. Because I only had to move these pieces maybe three or four times in my entire playthrough. There are issues with precision with placing these parts though, and I'll tell you about those in just a minute. There's also competition challenges, and it's divided into best trick and best run. Best trick judges you on the highest score you can get in a sequence, and in best run, you try to get the highest score you can, and that's about it. At least you can constantly hear a crowd screaming bloody murder while I pull off tricks. And then we get to the racing goals. These goals aren't that great in general. You basically have to get to the end of the run as fast as you can while going through checkpoints. There's also a mode where you have to do tricks in order to get more time, and these weren't hard at all, but they definitely took a few tries. Bailing in these especially suck, because they end up slowing the game down for some godforsaken reason and makes everything drag. And speaking of bailing, this might be a good time to mention the Hall of Meat mode. It's annoying, plain and simple. Sometimes when you bail, you'll basically atone how many bones you bruised, sprained, or broken, oh, yeah, and this makes it drag out. even more. More. And Retta, shut the fuck up! Up! Welcome to Hall of Meat, my friend. Hall of Meat. 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 Oh! Ho, 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 ho! That's going to the Hall of Meat. Anyways, you can choose to beat these challenges in two ways. You can own the challenge by doing the bare minimum required, or you can kill it by going above and beyond. It's a skate tradition at this point, and I ended up killing all the challenges. You do this over and over again, meeting pros, traveling the world, getting sponsors, so there might be some repetition, but the challenges are overall quite fun. There's going to be plenty of missions that you have to do over and over again, but once you kill them, it feels so satisfying. Either that or you feel a sense of what the fuck because the grinds don't work right or something. However, there were some missions that were honestly kind of bullshit. There was one mission in the spillway where you have to transfer over this gap. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, the issue is that you can barely get enough speed in order to transfer. And when you do make the transfer, it doesn't really look that great. This might be down to the realistic physics, however. This next one is quite small, but it's still annoying. In Barcelona, there's a my spot going where you have to get a 24 plus foot grind and get more than 250 points. There was nothing that could let me grind that long, so what I ended up doing was merging these two benches together. Apparently doing that perfectly is impossible because even though it looked like you lined it up from the overhead view, in reality it was off by a few inches. Damn you 480p! There's also this one goal in Danny Wade's Mega Park where you have to roll down the mega ramp and then transfer into the chute. And the problem is that 99% of the time you end up overshooting and falling on your ass, even potentially breaking all your bones in the process. You have to try to land on the side but the issue is trying to do it without going out of bounds. This took me a lot of tries. I even owned the challenge, but I'm not a bitch and ended up falling on my ass even more so I could kill it. But when I did, it felt so good. Finally, dude. Another goal I had problems with was this one in Paris, where you have to jump down and grind the ledge and hold the grind for a few more feet. The issue I had was that my grind just didn't count for some reason. I did it over and over again, but it just wouldn't count. That and just getting the general timing and orientation right. It was a bit hard to get on the rail, but eventually it ended up counting. Alright, let's talk about graphics and level design. Unfortunately, Skata is an ugly game. They tried to go for a more cartoonish look, but it ends up looking ugly in contrast to the whole realistic vibe. Especially your skater. Ugh. However, the level design outweighs all the negatives about the graphics, though. They took a lot of areas from Skate 1, but modified them to fit the whole Earthquake lore. There's more half pipes, more gaps, more rails, and overall it's a nice update to an otherwise very familiar map. And I'm not mad about this at all, these levels still hold up, and it's really interesting to see how these levels were downgraded, or upgraded in a way. There is more outside San Van, though. We have Paris, Rio, London, Barcelona, San Francisco, and Shanghai. Paris reminds Reminds me of the skate plaza from Skate 1. It's mostly downhill with a few stair sets and rails in between, plus a crusty JPEG of the Eiffel Tower in the background. Rio is just one big skate park with a mini ramp, and it has a nice bowl area. London definitely took some inspiration from the London banks, but I say that loosely though, as they basically just gutted the plates and put bowls in there. Barcelona is just one big plaza. There's a plethora of good spots to skate, nice rails and stair sets, benches and banks, it's a nice level. San Francisco consists of the Frisco Freakout. It just reminds me of the X Games Park in Skate 1. I know it's not the exact same, but again, these feel like the familiar levels you all know and love. Just spruced up. Shanghai is probably the worst level out of all of them. You start in a mega ramp and then it's just half pipes galore. Overall, there's a nice selection of original levels, but the big issue with all these levels, including San Van, is that they're... 
Ghost towns. There's no pedestrians, no other skaters. It's just you alone all by yourself. And sure, this might be due to system limitations, but it doesn't change the fact that the levels feel empty. At least there are some cool spots to skate though. Now to the soundtrack. It's basically just a chunk of Skate 2 soundtrack with a few extra songs put in there. And there's also some original songs that were made solely for the game. It's overall a very nice soundtrack. I want to talk about glitches too. I didn't actually experience that many glitches during my playthrough, but the glitches that I did experience were typical skate glitches, you know, that are kind of glitches in the engine. Trick bounces, and stuff like this. Whoa! <laughs> Honestly, that shit makes the game 20 times better. All right, let's get back to the story mode. You do more goals, and eventually you're Thrasher's Skater of the Year. Then you gotta get some photos for the Saudi cover. What you gotta do is grind this down crane, but you have to grind it for at least 90 feet and get at least 1,000 points. That's to own the challenge. To kill it, you gotta grind 120 feet and get 2,000 points. Again, I'm not a bitch, so I wanted to kill it. But this took me a while. Sometimes you slide off the rail, other times your timing is off because the swing of controls are delayed, so you can't jump from one section to the next. Sometimes you're just too slow on the rail, and other times you just won't get enough points. And if you want to get 2,000 points, you basically have to spam tricks while you're grinding. But the more you spam your tricks, the less distance you get on the grind, so you gotta be wise on what you want to do. Eventually you get it, pay a crappy cover, and then you head to the Plan B warehouse for a fundraising event for the funding of Slappy's Skate Park. You're then told to get some big air in this half pipe, and Oh, sounds easy enough. Oh, all right, gonna get some speed, gonna get some speed. Oh, shit. Fuck. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that was some big air. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Oh. So it's over. All right. Anyway, you can do more stuff and try to 100% the game, but you gotta grind by randomly playing, and I'm not gonna do that. I'm done. Overall, this was actually a pretty fun game. The foundation is there, the levels are great, the missions are fun and challenging, but the biggest problem is the controls. The swing and controls just do not work at times. This game needed a GameCube or classic controller option, and unfortunately, this is what holds the game back. So that's why I give Skated on the Wii a three out of five. Regardless of that, please do not deny yourself one of the best skateboarding games on the Wii. Like, it is Skate. Sure, the controls are a little bit dumbed down, and it doesn't feel great to do tricks, but it's still Skate. The foundation is there. The physics are there. It's Skate. I don't recommend any newcomers to the franchise play this as their first Skate game, but to any veterans, it might be a fun challenge for you, so pick it up. I also want to mention the fact that there was a DS version of Skate that came out, and that's actually a pretty interesting Port, if you can call it that. It's just skate with N64 like graphics and touch controls. The DS version was also ported to iOS, which is very interesting. It's the exact same game as the DS version, but it looks a little prettier. I might take a look at these ports in another video, so uh, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I didn't. If you did, like this video, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Make sure you join my Discord server in the link below, and if you're interested in old VHS stuff, check out my other channels, Enon and Enon 2. Also, check out my review of Deadhead Freddy, a criminally underrated PSP game. It's a, it's a very good game, and seriously, check out this review. Do it, please, please. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you whenever. Bye.